I aim to have balls that big. I aim to be that family with those amount of cojones. Oh, hell no. I grabbed the steak with my hand, gently shook off the juice, and executed a perfect throw right through the center of the open window. Honeymoon. 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 More like honey. Yo te mando una factura. Welcome back to another incredible episode of In Our Own World Podcast. Look at that right on cue. It's almost back. like we rehearsed it. Welcome back, Earthling. <laughs> <laughs> How was everybody? We missed you. I hope you've had an amazing week. How are you? Good. We've had a we've had a pretty interesting week. We have a resident possum <laughs> right now, which like don't get us in trouble because I kind of think we're not supposed to but to be fair we didn't expect to be put in this situation we just came across this tiny little cute little baby possum we found his mother deceased a few days before but we hadn't seen any of the babies and then one of our dogs started chasing it up the tree and of course in our latin inner abuela nature we are <laughs> like oh, we have to feed it we have to feed this possum so we brought the possum in the house we tried to release it this morning but then we realized that possums are nocturnal you, yeah. And they're not going to be active during the day. So now he's at home right now being taken care of. I already named it. She did name him. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Because you know when you name them, that's it. You develop yeah, an attachment also, to them. We're worried that our cat Leona could get to it because, you know, there are a lot of factors at, at play. We're going to release Bowie. But yes, we're going to release Bowie. I think M doesn't want to, but we do not need a seventh it's animal. So cute. So little, so cute. He's really cute. We, we'll put a picture of him. He or she. Somewhere we don't know. Because yeah, we haven't true. seen webinos or vaginos, but. We're just assuming. You know, yeah. Either way, that's, you know, Bowie works for us. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, but he's cute. But yeah, he's at home. How are you? How was your week? Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eventful. All right. Okay. Happy yeah. Hispanic Heritage Month. Eh, yes. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a good day to be the proud. Latina power <laughs> activate. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're gonna we're gonna take a chill. We're gonna do a nice little stroll down the internet's favorite storytelling corner. Oh boy. Reddit. <laughs> Woo! You what? still don't have a drum roll? She looks is so disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm gonna get on that. Reddit is a very interesting place. It's actually like an incredible hub of information if you know how to use it. But there is a learning curve to using Reddit because there almost is like its own language. Mm -hmm. There are like multiple different acronyms that if you don't know what they mean, you won't really know. I mean, you can still read the, the questions and the stories that people share there, but you won't really understand the context of what they're asking. So I've actually prepared a list. Oh. Not only to, to educate myself, but to help everybody get up to date because apparently us old people don't know what's well, up. Everybody's me and I've always been the person that like is A, doesn't understand Reddit. B, why does it open like a whole other thing when I'm just trying to get to it? A why thread? are there a million people saying something? What are all those weird names? I don't understand. And it, upvotes so. and eh. it's it's pretty cool though. I didn't even okay yeah educate okay educate well us, I won't yeah. tell you about how to use Reddit because I don't think I could actually properly explain it, but I will tell you <laughs> okay. a couple of the acronyms that are used in Reddit posts. Okay, so first we have A I T A. Am I the asshole? <laughs> y T A. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. <laughs> NTA. Not the asshole. <laughs> ESH. Everyone sucks here. <laughs> NAH. No assholes here. <laughs> TIFU. Today I fucked up. <laughs> IAMA. It's literally I am a. It's used for people describing their job, lifestyle, usually followed by an AMA, okay. which is ask me anything. I'm pretty sure AMA actually originated here on, on Reddit. Yeah, but yeah. TLDR. Asia actually taught me this one. TLDR is too long, didn't read. <laughs> and it's usually followed by like a short summary of whatever the actual post contains. All right. ELI5. Explain like I'm five. <laughs> OP is original poster. I-M-O or I-M-H-O is in my humble opinion or in my opinion. D-A-E. Does anyone else? <laughs> C-Y-O-A. Choose your own adventure. I-I-R-C. If I recall correctly. Oh. NSFW. We know that one. Not safe for work. 
NSFL is not safe for life. Oh. FTFY, fix that for you. SMA, just shaking my head. Mm -hmm. And HIFW is how I felt one. So we can always refer back to these as we go, because I'm sure that our Reddit posts have some of these. Great, because I forgot them all. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite one is obviously ESH. Everyone sucks here. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who came up with that. Uh, I don't know. Reddit. Maybe they just out of use, they started to. So it's essentially like a, like a message board, no? It's like a p platform where people can share stories, ask questions. Then they have an upvote and downvote system where people can essentially help the best replies or the best comments go to the top. Yeah. And there are subreddits, which are like threads that are specialized on certain topics. Yeah, honestly, like the only time I've really made an effort to use Reddit is if I have an issue in Logic in my music software. A lot of times people that have the same issues will post how they resolve the issue. So somebody will post a question like, okay, hey, how do I do this? And somebody will be like, oh, this is a top answer. Or right. Or like a couple of weeks ago when I asked, can jumping spiders like regrow their legs? Right. I learned about the story of this man who rescued a jumping spider after a wasp had torn apart off its all of its legs and he literally spoon fed it for like eight weeks until it regrew. His How do you legs. know it's real? Well, usually people will like provide proof. Oh, okay. But I guess it could all be made up. Who knows? The internet. The, the nature of the internet. Anyway. <laughs> Do you want to go first or you want me to read one first? You read one first. In the spirit of Reddit being a app that's used on phones, you will see our phones out today. There's just no better way to really just get it from the source. <laughs> All right, you ready? Ready. This one, the title is, Someone has been coming in our house and making it obvious that they've been there. Oh, crepe. <laughs> we, a 30s male and female kids and dogs, live in the country, United States, right above a state highway. We have about six neighbors, the closest being about a hundred yards away. This has happened four times that we know of. Last winter, my significant other, a 30s male, was home alone. He was in the back of the house sleeping when he woke up freezing cold. He went to investigate and found our kitchen door wide open. This happened three times, twice in one night and again on a different night. He was home alone each time. Most recently, he, I, and the kids had left the house for the playground around noon. We stayed about an hour. When we got back, he and I were chatting as we walk into the house. We turned the corner into our living room and both immediately froze. Our living room entrance was wide open. A few important things to note. One, our living room entrance is technically the main entrance, but we never use it. It stays deadbolt and the knob stays locked. Two, it takes a bit of effort to get the deadbolt turned and door open because the door frame tends to swell. Our kids wouldn't have been able to open it, probably at all, especially without us noticing. Three, we did fuck up by leaving the kitchen entrance unlocked, and I know it's foolish. It's an argument I've had with my significant other years on end, and I believe that he will now start taking it seriously. Four, I believe that this person entered and exited through the unlocked kitchen. I think the only reason they popped that unused door open was to let us know that they were there. Five, nothing is ever taken. There are valuables everywhere, and nothing is ever disturbed. Six, the dogs. The dogs are not a fan of strangers rolling up on our property. They're not violent, but they make it known that this is our house and that they may or may not be welcome. A couple of years ago, our dogs started to wander off the property when they were let out. It would take them five to ten minutes to come back when called. This was very out of character and has only recently started to get better. We wonder if there isn't someone else close feeding them treating them, becoming familiar with them, and disarming them. They're always in the house when we leave. This particular instance, when we returned home, they were acting funny. They were doing that shameful, I got into the trash or I snuck food off the counter, bow slash walk. Like they knew something wrong happened here. A few other milder occurrences that kind of make sense now. We've come home a couple times and the dogs have been outside. These times, we kind of just questioned whether or not we had truly let them in and moved on. The other day, I came home from work and used the key to get in. My oldest daughter said, Mom, I swear, right before you pulled up, someone knocked on the door, but when I looked out, I didn't see anyone. Oh, hell no. We have a long gravel driveway. It would be extremely odd for someone to knock and there not be a vehicle in that driveway. Anyway, I say all of this to solely get it off my chest. We've gotten extra keys made so my hard-headed significant other can start locking the fucking door. 
We already had indoor cameras that we will start arming every single time we leave. I ordered three outdoor cameras, window jams, doorknob jams, and swing locks, hotel room style, and frosted window film. Thank God. We feel violated, confused, and scared. Small update, I've ordered two smart deadbolts, a gadget detector, and have a couple more cameras that weren't in use that I'm going to mount in some windows. I can't sleep. Update two, nothing new. I just want to thank each and every one of you that have shown concern, offered any insight, or made any suggestions. I'm reading every single comment. My mind is a mess right now. I'm terrified. I spent $1,000 on security Jeez. measures. I left the house while my significant other is working, and me and the kids are in a safe place right now. That's it? No more updates? No more updates. There are some comments people are, are asking. They had cameras inside before. How couldn't they see it? Well, they, they weren't arming them. Oh, God. Yeah. Someone said, I know everyone is hitting the panic button, and rightfully so. However, just a thought worth mentioning. Are your doorknobs knobs or handles? If they're handles, are your dogs big enough to reach them? And the op <laughs> said, we've considered the possibility that the dogs have learned to let themselves out. I truly hope that's all that is. Someone else said, put ring cameras up and change the locks. It could be previous owners or family members. I'd be worried someone is perving on the kids. Oh, no. Crazy. Not likey. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. The kitchen. There's no way. Even if the dogs could reach the handles, explain that the, that the refrigerator door is open, the freezer door is open. Well, I mean, that also could be the dogs. Well, One of our how? dogs, Cleo, has long ass arms and... She's always yeah, but she to, like, can't open, open the fridge. No, no, no. Have you heard about those people who will, like live in people's attics and basements? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there are videos of it, and like all of a sudden, people who will put up cameras and the people that are in there don't notice. They'll see them coming down from like the ceiling or something. <gasps> no. Yeah, like up in the ceiling, and like they'll take a tile out and like come down, eat their food because people will notice like their food is missing their from their fridge. <laughs> I would just burn the whole house. Get rid of the whole house. <laughs> I think that's like beyond squatting. Okay, like, should I say one? Yeah, please do. Okay. I've got three cousins who are birth siblings and were adopted by my aunt and uncle 20 some odd years ago. The oldest boy was maybe six at the time and the two younger sisters were maybe three and four. They had just moved in and my aunt and uncle wanted to introduce them to some kids in the neighborhood from the Cook family down the street. So they set up a dinner date on the calendar. The oldest is just learning how to read, the six-year-old, and is the newest to the house. So he gets his sisters to, <laughs> to pack their toys, and they get caught trying to sneak out of the house. <laughs> what? My aunt, who at this point is still a strange old lady these kids just moved in with, asks them why they were leaving as she caught them. And the oldest asks him, why does the calendar say, Cook kids for dinner. <laughs> no! <laughs> I can't imagine the fear a six-year-old me would have felt if my new mom had written that on her calendar. But the story is so cute for some reason. Oh, my God. Because they're the cook kids. Cook kids for dinner. Yeah, because the cook Poor kids from the neighborhood things. were coming over, but he just was learning to read. So oh, he said, no. oh, no, she's going to cook us. We got to no. go. Got his siblings. They packed their bags up. She's like, where are you guys going? <laughs> Look, we're out of here, lady. I've seen Hansel and Gretel. Oh, my God. I mean, poor things. Imagine, like she said, it was her cousin, like. She, they didn't, they weren't comfortable with her yet. Of course. I'm not asking though. Did it? Did they say what happened to like why they were living with the aunt? Uh, Ugh, no. I want to know more. Say. Oh my gosh, cook kids for dinner, poor things. <laughs> How brave of them! I'm proud of them. If I were the aunt, I would be like, you know what? I'm super proud of you. <laughs> I mean, like obviously they had misunderstood the situation, but like that's good. They survival were a skills. Hansel and Gretel moment. <laughs> yes. Survival skills. Oof. Okay. Okay, your turn. Yeah. I like your creepy ones. Well, they're not all creepy. Okay. All right, let me let me test your knowledge because I just told you. A I T A. A I T A. Am I the asshole? Oh, okay. A I T A for refusing to take care of my children's half sister while their father has surgery. My ex and I share three children together, ages 12, 11, and 9. Our marriage broke down bitterly more than eight years ago. He had fallen for someone else. She was someone who had treated me like shit for months for what was then an unknown reason to me. But either they were having an emotional affair or a physical one, but something was brewing between them. She took her anger out at the fact that he was married 
And when he was finally honest and open with me, he allowed her to come into my home we had shared and to tell me that she was going to be my kid's mom and that she would take my life Oh, over. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell, oh, hell no. Hell I will be going no. to jail that day. Hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. So things were not good for a long time, and I have never forgiven him for how all of that was handled, especially when I had a very difficult time after the birth of our youngest. Fast forward 18 months, and they're married, and she's pregnant. My ex is having a hard time getting our kids excited and happy and attempts to get me to play happy family with them for the sake of the kids. I told him the only positive thing I could do was say nothing at all, because I was not going to play friends or like a caring family member for them or their baby. When his daughter was born, the mom bailed. Uh Apparently, she hadn't really wanted kids, just him, but realized he was never going to love her more than the kids. What? She died a little less than six months later. Oh, no. (laughs) When he found out he wanted me to get involved with his daughter, he told me his ex wasn't coming back and he had three kids with two parents and one with just him. I told him I would never be that little girl's mother. Over the years, I've attempted to get used to this little girl. She's innocent and my children's half-sister. Yeah. I'm not playing a familial role, but I am friendly around her and I interact with her on occasion. Mostly, I try to make things easier for my kids. Poor thing. X tried to remarry again, but his daughter wanted a mother and the woman did not want to be one. So she's had a chaotic life. X has been suffering from some health problems for a number of years now. He's due to have a pretty big surgery to try and help, but he has nobody who can take care of his daughter while he's off his feet, so he asked me. While also asking me, he wanted to request that I be willing to become her guardian if something were to happen to him. This is where more hard lines were drawn, and I said no. He begged me, and I told him I did not want to raise his child or to look after her slash spend that amount of time with her. Poor little girl. He told me it would be better for her to be with me than friends of his who have no kids. He said it would be better for her to be with family. I told him there was no way. He tried to get our kids involved, but they told him it would be weird for her to live with us. I was pissed at him for involving them like that. We argued for more than a week. He called me an A.H. Guess what? As, as hard. <laughs> for taking this out on his child. Then I found out she knew. She looked so sad when I saw her last. Oh. And knowing what she's been through, I have to ask, am I the asshole? Yeah. I think so. <sighs> Poor little girl. I think it's really tough. Yeah, but even in the way that she was describing it, she's like, oh, I want to have limited contact with her. Like, it's one thing if you don't want to take care of her, you feel like you can't. But she obviously resents the little girl. Yeah. That's she clear definitely in the way resents, that she's speaking. I think she definitely resents the little girl. I can understand how, and it's not fair. And it's not fair to the little girl because she's the, the innocent one in all of this. I can understand how she's probably like a visual marker mm-hmm. of whatever went down between her and her ex. Right. The infidelity, his, him bailing, the way that he handled that. Yeah. I wish she had the capacity to empathize with with this little girl yeah who is not to blame for her fucked up parents i mean like seriously fucked up yeah her mom left and then died i know and her dad is now you know undergoing health issues and nobody wants her (sighs) poor little girl but at the same time it's like it's a little girl (laughs) it's a little eight-year-old girl who didn't ask to be born i also think that maybe the biggest kindness that she can afford this little girl is acknowledging that she can't be there for her because also what kind of household would that be for her she'd be cinderella no i agree stepmother that doesn't want her but is forced to take care of her all i'm saying is i feel like some of her emotions are probably coming from other yeah but deep-seated you know at the same time like again if it were me i would hope that i possess the emotional maturity to distinguish between my unresolved issues with my ex and the fact that there's an innocent life that needs help. Yeah. But also, it's not her responsibility. No, yeah. So is she Absolutely. really an asshole? Jury's out. Jury's out. <laughs> you let us know her. <laughs> is she I-A-H-O-N-H-O-T-T-O-G-O or no? <laughs> okay. Okay, how about I, I say one? Yeah. Okay, this one's a short one, but I'm really curious to, to, oh, feel, to hear what you all out there and you on this couch and all the aliens in space have to say about it okay you ready yeah i'm ending my marriage and canceling our honeymoon just one day after the wedding because my wife decided it was the perfect time to confess her love for my brother during the ceremony that's better now her family is angry with me 
saying, I should have let her and my brother take the honeymoon trip I paid for together. <laughs> should I have given them a chance? You, you know what? <laughs> I aim to have balls that big. I aim to be that family with those amount of cojones to say, you should have just let them go on the trip. Oh, hell no. Yeah, let them go his on the trip. His brother with his I'll, brother. And I'll rent a boat and I will find them and I'll drag them off the coast. Wait, so it was his again. brother that his wife confessed her love for at their wedding. The, the, yeah. Could it have been like, I, I, oh my God, I want to talk to these people. I, know. I want to know how, to, what do you mean she confessed her love for him? Like, could not, could it not have been like One of the friendly? comments was like, kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I freaking love Reddit. <laughs> Obviously, don't do that. No, no. But, but think about it. But You're, you can think about I it. I like that. Oh, you, honeymoon. 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 More like honeymoon. Yo te mando una factura. <laughs> Listen, for all these years that I invested in this relationship and you were lying like a rug, pay me, man. And then at the wedding, you know, I always, that's one thing. Yeah, like why at the wedding? Why at the wedding? And I know that it's like a whole TV movie thing or whatever, but I feel like sometimes that really happens because people push to the last minute and then like getting the cold feet is like a real thing. Hello, what is your, what what's that story with your dad that he, you'd always tell me that I love where he came out of the room after finishing a show and he goes, yeah. mira que la gente es mala. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm like, you know, it's fake, right? He goes, somebody wrote it. <laughs> but um, anyway, no. So I feel like, yeah, the whole cold feet thing is a real thing, but like you really are an H-O-I-I-A H I T T O G O. Yes. If you interrupt a wedding, a wedding ceremony, ceremony to like say some D O M S oh. ass shit like that, okay, I'm you, creating you really my own gotta now. stop. Yeah, you're you're confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. First no. of all, I just tried to put myself in his shoes, like you setting up at our wedding, confessing your love for Amber. Oh! Disgusting. No, no. <laughs> that's, don't blame you. No, I wouldn't blame you. My sister's a catch, no, but that's disgusting. No, don't you ever? But no, <laughs> she's like my sister. <laughs> Good, that's gross. Absolutely, it's gross. No. I'm glad that you agree. I mean, love you, Amber, but like, no. You know, disgusting. I want to like trip her and throw snowballs at her. <laughs> <laughs> so this one okay. says, "T I F U," by throwing my steak out a window. Mm. Today I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. <laughs> Last night, my wife's boss from her brand new job invited us over for dinner. On the drive over, my wife reiterated many times to me how important it was to make a good impression. I scoffed and arrogantly informed my silly wife that I always make good impressions. <laughs> me. <laughs> well, yeah. I make an ass of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> my wife's boss is a single lady in her 50s, so it was just the three of us. We chit-chatted over drinks and salads and seemed to really be hitting it off. She laughed at my well-timed, perfectly appropriate jokes, and my wife seemed pleased. Did you write this? Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah. E E. <laughs> Soon, she brought out the main course, a nice, big, juicy steak for each of us. As I began to cut into my steak, I was discouraged to discover how undercooked this steak was. Oh, no. Now, I've had my fair share of rare steak. I prefer medium, but I can handle rare. This was several minutes on a hot grill short of rare. I probably could have resuscitated the cow had I tried. Instead, I sat there fidgeting with my knife and fork, worrying about how I was going to get away with not eating this steak. Oh my goodness. Claim veganism? Question mark? No, I'd already feigned great enthusiasm upon seeing the steak. Just then, our hostess excused herself to the kitchen to take care of some dessert preparations. Oh, no. As I looked across the fancy dining room table at the open window oh. of this third-story <laughs> apartment, a cartoon light bulb appeared over my head. <laughs> I knew I had to be decisive, realizing that she could return at any moment. I committed. <laughs> I grabbed the steak with my hand, gently shook off the juice, and executed a perfect throw right through the center of the open window. Here's the big time F you. The window wasn't open. It was the cleanest freaking window you've ever seen in your life. That is, until my no. mostly raw slab of steak slammed up against it and slowly slid down, leaving a trail of bloody juice in its wake. I love whoever wrote this. <laughs> my wife, whose steak was a nice medium rare, and was unaware of my predicament, turned, jaw dropped, and stared at me like I was an alien from another planet. This look then slowly morphed into more of a there is no place on this planet you can ever hide from me expression of demonic anger. 
My wife's boss heard the thud of the steak on window impact and came quickly. She took in the scene. The steak sitting on the windowsill, <laughs> the blood trail, my no. empty plate, and then gave me an inquisitive, puzzled look. <laughs> I just didn't know what to say. <laughs> it felt like a minute of silence, but was probably three or four seconds. Oh my god. Finally, <laughs> hold on. Finally, the best I could manage was... I'm so sorry. I'm such a klutz. I don't know. I was just cutting it and it it slipped. Just ask my wife. I'm really a klutz, right, honey? No help coming from that direction. I'll clean this up. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry, etc., etc., etc. Both women continued to stare at me like I had escaped from the loony bin as I smeared the blood around the window with my cloth <laughs> napkin, dusted off the steak, and continued to mutter my incoherent explanation. I knew no one was buying the story. I knew what I had to do. I sheepishly returned to my seat and proceeded to eat every bite of that disgusting, cold, chewy, bloody, raw steak. I remained pretty quiet the rest of the evening. My wife's only two words to me since the incident are, I'm fine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, there's just... Oh my God, wow, I saw that so vividly. Also, why didn't he just ask her to cook it more? Really? You're going to be a guest at your wife's Honey, you're going to be a guest at your wife's boss's house and ask her to, I am so sorry. Could you just make this? Could you just take this back to the kitchen and put this right back on the grill again? No, you can't say that. Oh, my God. I would have been like, so this raccoon came in. You wouldn't believe it. And I tried to, I tried to stop it. I tried. But really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would die. I would die. Update. Just got the first post. I'm fine. Communication from my wife via text who is at work. Mm. Good news. Boss's name and I just had a good laugh over how much of a fucking idiot you are. I hope you know you will never live this down. Love you, moron. (laughs) Isn't that one good? I'm just picturing him there, like, cutting it and all of a sudden just, like, deciding in his head, like, all right, ready? This is the moment. Wah! And then he whacks it across the room. Across the room into a closed window. Uh, Also, like, what if that would have hit somebody on the outside? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This but isn't my... the best possible scenario happened, which was that it was close. Wow. I really love that. I know you did. I really enjoyed that. I was that. excited. Thank you for that. that was a good one. I was excited to read that with you. I was like, Emily can't know this one. I got to read which, this to her. Which, by the way, this isn't my next story, which also has to do with, like, food and animals. Not food, but... Wait, what? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Like, my next story, like, reminds me of that one a little, but while you were saying that, it reminded me of something that came from reddit i don't have like it verbatim but this is like one of the first things i ever saw in there anyway so from my understanding there are certain stories on reddit that can go like quote unquote viral you know that uh-huh. i guess get like spread around a lot and yeah, they're even a lot of like votes yeah and even like curated things now that are like oh the most famous reddit stories and this is one of the first ones i ever saw and it was about uh a man who had a date right and at the end of the date, he got invited over to the woman's house for the first time but it, he had just met the woman oh, no. so he went to the bathroom and he did a big number two right no. but then her toilet wouldn't flush so he didn't know what to do and he was super embarrassed so he saw that in the bathroom she had her cat's litter box so he decided for whatever reason no he's probably friends with the steak guy who threw it at the window oh, no. they definitely are friends but anyway He grabbed his turd and he put it in the litter box and then it was like, okay, crisis averted because that way, you know, he's not going to leave his poop in her toilet. Your cat is going to take a human sized shit. Well, I mean, at that point, he thought it was a better option than that. But that wasn't the problem. The problem is that when he went back out and then eventually the woman went to the bathroom she says, did you shit in my litter box? No. And he goes, what do you mean? No. She goes, well, <laughs> there's poop in there and my cat died two weeks ago. So I'm wondering <laughs> how that got in the uh, litter box. <laughs> and he was never no. seen again. <laughs> Qué pena. Tierra, trágame. Tierra, trágame. Tierra from wow. the litter box, trágame. <laughs> okay, this is very interesting. There was once a chicken who managed to live a year and a half after his head was cut off. Meet Mike, the headless chicken. His owner botched the job, lopping his head off with an axe, leaving just enough brain stem to keep him alive. Mike was able to jump space. 
<laughs> Mike was able to walk and mostly act normal for a chicken without a head. What? He went on to become a popular carnival attraction, and the only reason he died was that he choked to death on a kernel of corn. Did you make this up? Did you write this? No. <laughs> this sounds like you wrote it. No. Emily, tell me the truth. Wait a minute. Who knows how long Mike could have gone otherwise. To this day, there's a yearly festival dedicated to him in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And then wait, then there's an edit. This is real. You can look it up because guess what? Mike ain't the only one. Just found this YouTube video of a monk carrying around a headless chicken. It's a little disturbing. It's a whole thing. They have a whole festival for him. He survives. I I'm not it. buying it. I, okay, see, I'm that's to look not at you. fair. You're telling me that Reddit is real. No, because I'm looking in your eyes and I'm waiting for you to give me that little twinkle that you're link. messing with me. I'm not messing with you. And what is, is where real. does the link take you? Where, click the link. Where, where's it going? Do we really want to do this right yeah, now? Yeah, I, I need to know. Guess what it says. This video has been removed for violating YouTube's <laughs> no. guidelines. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Watch. There's no way. We're going to live fact check this. If he has a, Yeah, there you go. Wow, look at that. Literally, you can look it up. Even Chetrina knows. Mike, the headless chicken, was a male chicken who lived for 18 months after being beheaded. He holds the Guinness World Record for the longest surviving chicken without a head. I'm dead. Mike, I am Mike, the headless dead. Chicken. Mm -hmm. That totally sounds like something you he made up. He was fed up. by a dropper that dripped water and liquid food into his esophagus. Okay, so first he tried to kill him. Yeah, Right. and then he survived. And then instead of finishing the job he's like oh now that you didn't die by my hand let me he took him on tour he made money from him that man is sick he took him around to carnivals and then he died in phoenix that's while awful he was on tour that poor chicken like that list chicken what is the point of life you can't see smell hear. i wonder if they ate him after he died can't even emily I would never eat Poor Mike. Mike. I would have never tried to take Rest Mike's head peace, off in Mike. the first place. Rest in peace, Mike. Thank you for your time. Wow. Oh, my God. What a legend. Thanks, Mike. I'm personally affected by that story. Yeah. It's it's a weird one. All right. I don't, even, I don't even want to be fascinated by it because like, I don't think headless one. chickens should be roaming around the earth like that. I mean, at that point, just put it out of its misery. Yeah, exactly. But also it gives a lot more meaning now to running around like a chicken with, a, with its head cut off. Right. Because that's actually possible. So I wonder what Mike walked around like. Maybe that's actually not a bad thing. Maybe that's actually a compliment. Wow, Mike. Moment of silence for Mike, guys. If somebody tried to chop my head cut off, would you feed me with a dropper and take me around on tour? I wouldn't take you around on tour, but <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to ask you if... I don't think I would. Oh, my God, like Beetlejuice. You would want me to feed you with a dropper? What's the point of keeping you alive? I can still play drums without a head. How will you hear? Oh, shit. How will you vibration like that lady from the ted talk okay go we're getting off topic yeah that's don't put me on that spot because like <laughs> you know things like if, if you I was wanted a worm, me to keep if you alive yeah, would you talk to if me? i was if i was a worm would you love me <laughs> yeah if you wanted me to keep you alive absolutely i would i would i would do anything for you but i don't think you'd want that hmm. okay would you i don't know all right well, yesterday my girlfriend gave me a bath okay I've been with my girlfriend for about three years now and living together for one year. She's on the spectrum, but she is very high functioning. She's very sweet. I will admit there were some challenges in the beginning since I had never really known anyone on the spectrum, let alone dated one, but she was very nice and accommodating and got me up to speed. If I want to go out, she has me send her the menu so she can think for a while about what she wants to order. She used to not like movie theaters, but we found going to the earliest screenings of the day or waiting a few weeks meant a lot less people, which made it much more enjoyable for her. She's very direct and it's honestly kind of wonderful. She does not mask her feelings. If something is bothering her, she will voice it aloud. She's a great communicator. Work has been really stressing me out these last few weeks. New efficiency metrics are some horse shit and it's taken its toll on me. I was working late a lot so I wasn't able to go to the gym as much. My morale has been at the toilet. When I got home yesterday, I ended up collapsing on the couch. Oh. I felt my girlfriend sit next to me and stroke my hair. I got up and gave her a hug. She told me she knew how stressed out I had been, and she wanted to do something for me. She asked if she could draw me a bath. Aww. I was kind of surprised by the idea, but I said sure. She went to the bathroom, got the water going before going to our bedroom and fetching me a set of pajamas and walking me to the bathroom. She had me undress and get in. She then sat on the rim of the tub and washed me. She ended up talking about her day and her work while lathering up my hair. It was heaven. <laughs> Afterwards, she helped me towel dry and put my dirty clothes in the hamper and make me a quick dinner. 
That was maybe the most romantic thing anyone has ever done for me. I've never felt so loved. I might marry her. Oh. I know. Are you trying to tell me to draw you back? No. Quick, 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 quick. That's so sweet. So cute. Right? There are some cute good stories story. on Reddit. Cute little ones. Oh, I want to take a bath now. Yeah. With some sobida. You have a last one for me? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you have more than that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just kidding. All right. So we are in outer space after oh, all. Oh, oh, wait. We have a couple more for us, but this one is about abduction. So it was a thread where people were giving their abduction stories uh, and whatnot. Shut the front door. Yeah. So somebody said this one and this one gave me like the tingles. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I'm massively late to this thread, but I have a real story. When I was young, the neighborhood kids used to play dark hide and seek or dark capture the flag, often pretty late at night. Our parents were okay with this as long as we didn't leave the neighborhood. It was the early 90s. We were basically thrown out of the house on the weekends. Anyway, one night after the game was over and everyone had gone home, my stepsister and I were hanging out in the front yard, just sitting on one of those green cable boxes talking. At one point, she stops talking and points into the sky and asks about the light that she saw. I turned and looked to see it myself. The light was faint blue and was brighter and bigger than the stars around it. It was moving in ways that seemed impossible, and it became aware we were looking at it as soon as I locked eyes with it. I don't know how to describe how big it was. It was just this immediate feeling that it was looking right back at us, looming. Suddenly, the light moved towards us, almost in the blink of an eye. It went from being roughly double the size of a star in the sky to as bright as an airplane or a helicopter. There was no sound, and the light didn't illuminate the surrounding area, which gave it a weird feeling. I tried to say something to my sister, but I found myself unable to speak and suddenly could barely move. I turned my head to see my sister looking very scared, and she was also unable to speak or move. I thought I heard a noise, and the light started shining on me, which made me turn my head backwards towards the object, and I felt the piercing light basically blind me. I was bathed in the blue light. After this, things got a bit hazy, and I don't remember certain moments. I was in a place that was mostly dark, but there were no lights that seemed to hover by themselves with no visible technology. I don't know if I was laying down or standing up because there was a feeling of no gravity or downward force in any direction. I remember interacting with an entity that was human-esque but seemed to be different, like a beautiful person, but they had no male or female characteristics completely androgynous but they were very symmetrical and Hot. smooth appearance <laughs> to the face and My body <laughs> otherwise very human looking they talked to me but i was acutely aware that it was in my head and not out loud it was like moments of being conscious with moments of haziness in between i don't know how to describe it but i finally felt what it is to feel telekinesis i was aware they were doing things to me but i don't remember exactly what I do distinctly remember a piercing device they inserted just behind my ear on my right side. It went pretty deep, but it didn't hurt. It just felt almost itchy for a second, and then they told me they were taking a sample and depositing something in me that would allow them to remotely monitor me over time. No. They explained that this was not the first time they had done this to me specifically, and they would continue to do so throughout my life, and that they were literally thousands of people they were doing this to. It was to scientifically study some kind that they tried to explain to me, but I honestly don't remember the exact purpose. I was able to ask them a few other things in the moments of being conscious, like where my sister was, and they explained she was having the same thing done to her. I asked them point blank if they were aliens, and they found it humorous. They told me they were humans from the future. I've heard that before. But I got the distinct feeling that this wasn't the truth. Again, I don't know how to describe why I thought this. It was just a different feeling when they told me this versus the other things that were saying. It felt like a lie or simplification of some kind. After some time of being out of it again, I became aware that my body was bathed in the light and all of a sudden I was back home. I don't know how long it was before I realized what had happened, but at some point I came to and realized I was sitting on the grass next to my sister. It was years later before I ever spoke to my sister about that night, and she remembers much less than I do. She remembers seeing the light, being blinded by it, and then feeling weird and waking up beside me. To this day, she hasn't explained it, but she said she feels like she saw a helicopter in the sky and then just fell asleep. I honestly had forgotten about this event until two years ago when my wife mentioned that I had a dark spot behind my right ear that kind of looked like a burn mark or a scar, but also like a pimple or a mole. 
She likes to pop things and was dying to let me try her to pop it. When she reminded me of it, the memories of the event flooded back into my head and I was a bit emotionally upset, but agreed to let her mess with it. She tried to pop it, but nothing came out. It's still <laughs> there. It looks exactly as she described it, exactly as I remember it. I've had MRIs and other scans throughout the years, but nothing has ever shown up, so I have no idea what it is or if anything's inside there. I try not to think about it now and then, but the memories rush back every now and again. That's my story, as honestly as I remember it. <laughs> Creepy. What the heck? Right? Not to be the asshole? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, were you on drugs? <laughs> you know, like, I it begs the question... Maybe. Not that I don't think aliens are real. Yeah. Because I know that we're egomaniacs here on this planet Earth, but it's literally impossible to actually believe that we're the only intelligent life yeah. form to exist in this massive universe. Right. But that's creepy. Yeah. I that mean, also, creepy you to know, think. that this is something that really fascinates me as I point to my alien tattoo. But um, what fascinates me is that a lot of people who make these claims. A lot of them have similarities in the way that they describe, describe their them. experiences and also the these quote-unquote beings. And the truth is that you can literally go on the internet right now and see NASA, as they say their briefing of the unidentified flying objects and in the air and in the sea, that they have videos of from pilots that are in the army or otherwise in the air force. So you know what I mean? Like at this point, it's getting hard to deny it, but it's, it's also hard to, to grasp it. Something of that. Well, I remember last year and Halloween when I saw Starlink for the first time and I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. All the satellites in a row. I thought that it, it was a UFO. And then I did my research when right. I was like, bunch of lights in a row in the sky. Crazy. Well, yeah. In Miami, there was a big story going around that they had video cause they're, they were these kids that got into a fight with sticks, but people that were there, eyewitnesses were saying that that's not what happened. And it was like the biggest police presence that had been on the news oh, in Miami in a yes. long time. And they were actually saying it was these tall eyewitnesses. beings. Eyewitnesses were like, like there were these tall, tall ass, gray ass things walking yes. around. They were shooting at them. <laughs> also, they said that there was a fight. Yeah. You don't dispatch no. entire for units a fight between for teenager. a fight between teenagers. Yeah, there anyway. were like 50 cop nah, cars no, there. Nah, no. <laughs> Do what you want. Our Do producer is want. looking at us like, um. You can even put it in my butt. That's what aliens do. They put it in your boo. Well, whatever. If you give them consent, that's Or behind you. your ear. No, definitely in your rear. Wow. You like that? Yeah, I just feel like there's another no, line. No, that's so it. I that's wanted it. To give that's you it for the now. space. Okay. You have any more? It's going to be hard to follow that one up. That's a good one, right? Jesus. If you come for me. Hold on. I'll hide in a tree. My name's Emily. I'm like still affected by that story. The fuck away from me. Just kidding. Let's be friends. I'm an alien to the end. I know you're still going to put it in my rear end. That's the way a story ends. <gasps> Do you think it's about that time for everybody's running to the time <laughs> 18? Well, it's from the Space Network. Space News! <laughs> I just know the music is coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies, Jern Jermones, Dreamettes, Dreamones, Crickets, Croucons, and the possum in our house. <laughs> Let's find out what's going on in outer space this week. Starting with some very interesting news, which is that SpaceX has had its very first private spacewalk in human history. Scary. Ooh. Talk about scary. The four-member crew of a private space flight has returned to Earth after a trip that included the first ever spacewalks by non-professional astronauts. The most notable commentary on this breaking news clearly came from the non-professional aliens saying, quote, stay out of space, mortal biatches, and then proceeded to burp goo into the loading dock of the SpaceX ship. We're in their space right. after all. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Space if they're going to send non-professional astronauts, they're not professional aliens. Absolutely. They're going after you. 
You're freaky. I can imagine it was something <laughs> You're like that. So freaky. All right. Earth is set to temporarily obtain another moon on September 29th. This is true and pretty incredible. The asteroid, known as Mini Moon, is expected to make a single orbit journey around Earth, ending on November 25th. We reached out to MM, Mini Moon, for a comment, <laughs> and her reply was I'm just coming to visit my sister Luna, but one orbit is enough with y'all crazy asses. Further adding, not to mention I've been burned by Sol one too many times, if you know what I mean. No further comment at this time, but we look forward to seeing you while you're here, Mini Moon. <laughs> All right. La- what? <laughs> I like that one. I'm, ex- <laughs> I'm excited to see you. Just, just coming around quickly. Obviously that, but, you know, <laughs> drama. Uh, anyway, lastly this week in outer space, NASA astronauts will try to grow plants on the moon. You oh, heard that right. I like that. <laughs> Among three experiments heading to the moon as part of the Artemis 3 mission, one will be a plant growth study. You heard that right. NASA has announced lunar effects on agricultural flora, L-E-A-F, leaf. Oh. So cute, right? Yeah. Curated by the Colorado-based Space Lab Technologies going to investigate the lunar surface environment's effects on space crops so what i am hearing here is colorado plants leaf and space herbs all right mm. they are growing weed in space everybody that's <laughs> what i am hearing come on talk about a dispensary no gravity all right and this has been <laughs> space news wow you're really good <laughs> I'm like I'm consistently impressed. For I those of you that don't know, Emily writes these. I mean, Emily the just reports news. the very serious, very <laughs> accurate news. But you're you might have another another gig there as a comedy writer somewhere. What's what's funny? Nothing. This was very serious, and I take it straight to the heart. And I'm so thankful for you know. This if you've seen my videos as a kid, I have always been very into bringing you the news or the weather depending on <laughs> martha may martha may namonga back to you namonga you guys have to see that <laughs> you have to see that it's been, you know I, I love bringing you the news and the weather and anything else you may want to hear that is 100 percent accurate i don't say things that are not accurate mm, except for what you just said right now which is that you don't say things that are not accurate that is inaccurate just for Anyway, <laughs> we hope you guys have had a f- blast out here in outer space with us. We certainly have. Absolutely. And if you have some interesting Reddit stories of your own, please send them to us. You know that we are constantly checking our <laughs> socials and love interacting with you guys online and hearing your crazy Absolutely. So find us at In Our Own World Pod. And we can't wait to fly with you next week. Thanks for everything. Love we ya. love you. Bye. 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 Launch.